Praise the Lord. So glad to be coming to you by video this morning. What a powerful time of worship. What a powerful time we're going to have in the Word all across this place. Stand up on your feet, won't you, and take your Bibles and turn to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. I'm going to read God's Word, going to teach to you, preach to you. You're in for a very special treat. 2 Timothy chapter 1, starting in verse 5. And again, greetings to all of our online congregation. Praise God that you're here with us even when you can't be. We're so glad. 2 Timothy chapter 1, find verse 5, if you will, through verse 7. Just two verses of Scripture. Are you ready? If you're ready, say aye. All right. On your marks. Get set. New international version. Let's go. I've been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Let's read that verse, that final verse 7 together. Read it right out loud, whatever version you have. Verse 7, you ready, set, go. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. Father, thank you for your presence, for your power, for your anointing that comes upon us even now. I pray that you would give us living understanding, each and every one. In these services today, God, we would be transformed by the preaching and the teaching of your word. Would you just lay hands on your own heart and ask God to speak to you? Speak to us today. Will never be the same. And may the effects of this service be far reaching even to eternity. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Why don't you be seated comfortably? And we do have notes for you this morning. We'll hope that to go ahead and fill those in. We've been preaching a series called Living Your Best Life. And again, we got that title from a talk show host in 2005. It's then been popularized through what we call Instagram influencers and other influencers saying, I'm living my best life. It's a, an expression that's used now to say that you're living up to your potential, you're following through on your goals, you're, gonna, you're doing all that, that you can do to live your best life. And we like saying it this way, your best life is the best. Best life is your blessed life. Let me say that again. Your best life is the blessed life. Say it. Your best life is the blessed life. So I want to talk to you and preach to you from this text in a message entitled, Be Not Afraid. Bump your neighbor and say, be not afraid. Be not afraid. Bump your other neighbor and say, don't be afraid. Say, don't be afraid. Because fear is running rampant in our, in our culture. Fear is running rampant all over the world, so many people are afraid. Let me ask you an introduction. What are you afraid of? Are you afraid of anything in particular? I've met people that were afraid of going outside. That's called agoraphobia. I've met people that are afraid of, of spiders, arachnophobia. I've met people that were afraid of all kinds of things, sometimes rational, sometimes irrational, there's a lot of people that are afraid of germs. You know what that's called? A germophobia. And uh, there might be some good reasons for that at times. God wants to deal this morning with fear. Fear is an interesting component in our lives because there's a good fear and there's a bad fear. Fear of irrational things, that's a bad kind of fear. But there's the fear of the Lord, that's a good kind of fear. Fear of man, that's a bad kind of fear. Fear of the Lord, growing in the knowledge of the fear of God, is the beginning of wisdom, and that's the good kind. Bad kind of fear immobilizes us. Have you ever been 
so scared that you weren't able to move. Certain people respond differently when they're scared or when they're afraid. Some people run and hide. Other people throw hands. Immediately, they're throwing hands. What do you, what do, you do when you're afraid? Have, when's the last time you, you were afraid? Have you ever been immobilized by fear? Fear has a way of robbing us from God's plan. And that's what I want to deal with. And that's what the Apostle Paul is saying here to Timothy. He's saying that not be afraid. God has not given us a spirit of power. He's given us a spirit, pardon me, a spirit of power, love, and sound mind, not a spirit of fear. Come on, say, I don't have a spirit of fear. Come on, say it again. I don't have a spirit of fear. I mean, even if you do feel like you have one, why don't you say that? I don't have a spirit of fear because that's not something God wants to give you. It's not something that's from the Lord. And if you can identify fears in your life and begin to deal with them with the Word of God and deal with them in prayer and begin to unravel that or disconnect fear so that it doesn't immobilize you and doesn't keep you from following through on the Lord. You see, if fear, if the enemy can use fear to keep you from moving forward, to keep you from being obedient, to keep you immobilized, and that you would shrink back, then you will never see your best life. You'll never see the blessings of God released in a way that they could be if you're immobilized by fear. And so fear is one of the main ways that dictators have controlled countries. And I dare say that there are those even in our country that would try to control us with fear. Oh, if you don't do this, you're just going to be in trouble. Oh, if you don't do that. I mean, there's so many purveyors of fear. I'm not buying. Come on, someone say, I'm not buying today. I'm not buying. Not today, Satan. (laughs) Satan tries to intimidate us. Write in your notes. Satan tries to bind us with fear so he can intimidate us and keep us from moving forward in God's will. And I have had it happen many, many times, right when I'm on the edge of breakthrough, right when God's bringing me to a place of of tremendous blessing, fear is like sprayed out like a skunk would spray stink. The devil will spray fear. There's even a spirit of fear, but you have to stand against that thing. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14 Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by fear of death. I'm going to tell you that I see more than ever before people afraid of the fear of death. They're afraid of dying. So if you say, Pastor, are you afraid of dying? I am not afraid of dying. I'm not afraid of dying. I'm afraid of dieting, yes. I'm not afraid of dying. I am not afraid of dying. I know where I'm going to go. I'm, it's settled in my heart. I don't want to die. I feel like I've got something to do. In fact, you've heard me declare it before. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live 120 days preaching. How many days are you going to live? Uh, I don't know. I've heard people say, I'm going to live 60 years, and then I'm going to die. And you know how long they live? 60. I'm going to go for 120, and then I'm going to ride on on to heaven, or you know, I'm going to get raptured out of here, or 120, I'll go in full strength. I'm believing God to do that. I'm not going to yield to fear. I'm not afraid of dying, but I do have a fear of the Lord. And so many are afraid. A, a realistic view of fear. Fear is a protective mechanism. It's called fight or flight. Fight or flight syndrome. Let me, let me read to you out of a psychology Uh, book, a definition here, fight or flight response is an automatic physiological reaction to an event that is perceived as stressful or frightening. The perception of threat activity activates, pardon me, the sympathetic nerve system and triggers an acute stress response that prepares the body to fight or flee or flight, to fight or to, to fight or to flight. What that means is and it's, it's a reaction that your body has when you face fear. And to fight is literally to fight, to throw hands, to come against whatever thing is happening, or to run. Sometimes it's good to run. And we all face fear from time to time. All of us. All of us face fear. But there are fear that can be demonic. And a demonic spirit can attempt to control us through phobias. Phobias, through fears, through anxiety. 
through refusal to do what God's told us to do. You know, you, the enemy's nervous about you obeying God because if you obey and you move to the other side, if you press through that fear, you press through that anxiety, come on, the Bible says be anxious for nothing. Be fearful for nothing. You could, feel, you could go ahead and put that in the blank. Be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and petition, make your request known to God, and the peace of God will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus, says that in Philippians. The answer to fear is found in the very two verses that we read. Let's look at this. We must choose to fear only God and put our trust in Him. We must choose to fear only God and put our trust in Him. And that's, what, that's what's being said here. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, says Proverbs. My wife frequently prays, as many of you know, teach us to fear the Lord. Give us the fear of the Lord. That's a beautiful thing. I'll preach it to you again. I have preached on what actually the fear of the Lord is. That's an important thing to understand because the fear of the Lord will keep you. The fear of the Lord will protect you. The fear of the Lord will guard over you. I've said it so many times. It's in Scripture, fools go where angels fear to tread. You can't just do anything you want to. You need to be led by the Spirit. And in actual fact, I would have fear of not obeying God because I'm not sure what would happen. I obey God because I love Him, not because I'm afraid of Him, but also, also I understand very clearly that God's on the throne and I am here in the earth and I am made to live and obey and trust Him. When I don't live in a, in a place of abiding trust, then I enter on into difficulties with Him and even can open yourselves up to demonic influences. Oh, God's got to be, God's got to be number one. Come on, someone say, Lord, help me to trust you. Come on, trust, the word, the Greek word is pistis. It's, it's tied to belief and faith. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Say it with me, write in your notes. God has not given us a spirit of fear. That's not, that's not what God gives us. So if you're finding yourself fearful, so if God's not given us a spirit of fear, which is right here, God has not given you a spirit of fear. Then if you are given to f- being fearful, worrisome, if you're, if you're given to worry and fear and anxiety and phobias, I want you to start to push back on that thing. The Lord wants you to start to push back on it. Don't just let that come on you. Fight against it. Say, no, I'm, I'm no. I refuse that. I'm not going to give in to that phobia. I'm not going to give in to that. Oh, what if I got COVID? Stop. I'm convinced COVID comes with a spirit of fear. It partners with it. And I'm convinced the more you cave into fear, the more it attracts not only COVID-19, but every other foul thing. Don't yield to fear. Say it. Don't yield. I can't hear you. Don't yield to fear. Fight that thing. It doesn't come from God. Fight against it. It comes from the devil. Fight against the spirit of fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear. That's not what he's given us. And so if you let it come on you and you wring your hand, or you're terrified about doing it. That's why I said when COVID-19 first came out, I'm going to go lick every doorknob in Wasilla. Yeah, then I got COVID-19 and decided that I probably shouldn't be licking doorknobs and how that would be very strange. It was posted in the Frontiersman. Pastor Bracken of the King's Church licks doorknobs. That would be very strange. It would be bad for the church. But the point is, I'm not going to yield to a phobia. I'm not going to yield to a, a germ. I'm not going to be stupid either. But at the same time, God's with me. Who can be against me? I'm going to overcome. I'm going to follow through. I'm going to obey God. We're going to stay open. We're going to keep preaching, praying, prophesying. Not going to yield to fear. Say it. I'm not going to yield to fear. Say it. I'm not going to yield to fear because it's not from God. Not that kind of fear. There is wisdom. You know, not all fear is rooted in uh, in the demonic. For instance, if you go outside and there's a large brown bear outside your cabin and fear comes all over you and you go back inside, That's not fear that's rooted in the demonic. That's rooted in intelligence. So (laughs) know the difference. Hallelujah. All right. We have power. Come on, say we have power. We have power. The power of God is at work in us. The power of God is at work in us. I many times have meditated on that scripture that says, 
The this, this same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of me. Resurrection power lives on the inside of me. When I'm feeling weak, when I'm feeling discouraged, when I'm feeling overwhelmed, I'll lay hands on myself. I just did it today. I laid hands on I just did it right before I come to preach to you. I said, oh God, help me now. Help me, help me. The power of the resurrection, come on, say it. The power of the resurrection lives on the inside of me. Come on, say it. The power of the resurrection lives on the inside of me. That means death has no hold on me. That means that I'm going to make it. That means that no matter what I face, all the days of my life, I'm going to run through it, jump over it. I'm going to be more than a conqueror. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. I'm going to make it. God's power is at work in me, and he's at work in you. Start declaring that instead of your fear. Instead of partnering with the fear, partner with the reality that the resurrected power of the Holy Ghost, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, lives on the inside of you. Come on, somebody ought to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, shout to God. Ah, Come on, give him praise. That's the truth. The power of God is in you. Say it again. The power of God is at work in me. Say it. The power of God is at work in me. And we're all to be filled with the love of God. We're supposed to be filled with the love of God. Come on, filled with God's love. Right in the text, there it is. And I love this last part. I mean, you could do a whole series on the love of God. But we're supposed to be filled with God's love. And it's, this gen- it's not in your notes, but it's this generational blessing, which I, I just love that. I'm convinced that faith, I'm persuaded, the faith that was in your grandmother, now is in your mother, is also in you. He reminds him to fan into flame. That's what you do, to fan into flame the gift of God. Come on, some of you need to fan into flame the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's how you do it, by speaking in the Spirit, praying in tongues, what I mean, praying in tongues. That's what I mean by that. And, and de- declaring and encouraging and strengthening yourself in faith, quoting Scripture, have someone lay hands on you, fan into flame. That's what he's doing to Timothy right here. He's fanning it into flame. I remind you, to fan into flame the gift of God that is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or fear, it's the same thing, but a spirit of power, and of love. Come on, someone say, I've got a spirit of power. I have a spirit of power and a spirit of love and of self-discipline. Oh, did I just say that? It's like a curse word for some of you. Sound mind is another, another way to say that, but self-discipline. Do you know that you have to discipline yourself to stay out of fear? You have to. You know, some of you, I know people that have stopped watching the news because they said every time I watch the news, all I do is have this wave of hopelessness and fear just come over me. Oh, what am I going to do? Yeah, you know what? If, if you have to stay, to, if you have to turn off the news to stay out of fear, that's probably a good idea. Now, I don't think you should be like an ostrich with your head in the sand, you know, not paying attention to anything. I have to pay attention to things. I'm, I'm leading. I'm directing. I'm, I'm doing what God called me to do, and it's important to be aware of current events and what's taking place so we can pray. But don't yield to fear. Come on, somebody say, don't yield to fear. Don't yield to fear. Yield to the love of God. Shift your channel. Change your channel. You know, I, um, I repented of not having a generator. I was supposed to get one years ago and uh, didn't. And then we had a power outage. And Pastor Karen's like, I told you, you need to get a generator. So we went and got a great deal at Costco, this generator. And it takes three kinds of fuel. It takes natural gas, it takes propane, and it takes gasoline. And I can switch that fuel selector on my generator to select the right fuel. Some of you need to just change your stinking channel from fear. Change it. It's an act of your will. It's self-discipline. You discipline yourself to say, I'm not doing that anymore. The same thing I had to do here physically for me. I, I, I started getting plump. Heavy, was eating everything, and I had to say, no, stop. Come on, some of you just need to say stop to fear. Say stop. I had to say stop to my flesh. I had to discipline myself. You know, self-discipline is very important, and God has given you 
power to discipline yourself. If you don't discipline yourself, somebody else will. So, fear. Don't be afraid. Everybody say it. Don't be afraid. Be not afraid. Why? Because God is with you. God is for you. Separate, cut off every allegiance with fear and ask God to give you the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. Declare it. Declare the faith. Declare power. Declare love. Declare the plan of God. Fan yourself into flames. Hallelujah. And fulfill what God calls you to do because he's not given you a spirit of timidity. He's given you a spirit of boldness, power, love, sound mind. Can you say amen? Thanks for listening to this message today. If the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and you realize that you need Jesus as your Savior and you'd like to pray with me to either commit your life to Jesus for the first time or rededicate your life to the Lord, repeat this prayer after me. Father God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for my sins. Jesus, thank you for dying for me and bringing me forgiveness. I'm sorry for my sins. I repent of them today and I ask you to cleanse me and wash me of all my sin. I commit to live for you all the rest of the days of my life. And I pray this in your name, Jesus, amen. If you prayed that prayer today, would you text the word SAVED to 907-357-2065? We'd like to send you some information and some materials that will help you in your Christian walk.